Uh, to help us with this, the Bonson Group CIO, David Bonson. Okay, David, so connect the dots on, on how we should uh, handle the virus, the economy, and, and, you know, mask, mask mandates, and all of that stuff. Well, the issue of masks is is a no-brainer to me. I, I don't understand all the controversy around it. I think people, when they're around other people, should be careful, wear masks. I think the thing that's hurt the cause the most is the overzealotry of the pro-mask crowd They've kind of recommended certain things that intuitively seem silly to people. And so then their compliance breaks down altogether. But the investment lesson in the segment you're doing right now, Charles, is these people's reliance on models. They use models that have big inputs and and you can change the outcome dramatically based on what you tell the model. And then they come back and say it's going to be a trillion dollars of savings or we need 15 percent or 18 percent. And it's not that it's totally made up. It's accurate in the model, but the model has massive bandwidth of range of outcomes. Well, this is how a lot of investors end up approaching things. Economists offer these models that dictate these these huge different outcomes, and it just simply doesn't work that way. People have got to have a better plan than what our experts have given us with models like this one. I, I, is that akin to sort of the the uh, either the use of algorithms, uh, you know, the way they react and, and people saying, hey, it's not me it's the algorithm, but someone had to program it. And of course, when you do that, there's going to be certain biases tied into that. It's, it's exactly like that. Of course, sometimes with an algorithm, something can be off by just point one hundredth of a percent and totally mess everything up. In this case, things are off by ranges of 10, 20, 30 percent. So imagine how much it, it kind of changes things. I think on the basic level about right. masks, the common sense is let's wear them and let's be healthy and, and protect one another. But the idea of trying to apply economic outcomes with a dollar sign based on what a model says is really silly. Two things on the mask. Uh, you, you mentioned some of the other an- ancillary things that uh, pro mask crowd would like to have. But also, I agree with you. I don't think that the beef has ever been with the mask per se. But the worry or concerns about the mandate, if 100 percent of Americans agree that you wear a mask and there's a mandate, Okay, but what happens when only 80 percent of the American public agrees on something or 60 percent, one day 40 percent, and still the government's already been given the go ahead to use mandates? I think a lot of Americans are so afraid of big government and government power, David, that the abuse of the use of mandates, particularly on a federal level, is what's scaring people. I completely agree. I also think a mandate would backfire in a profound way because we'd still have plenty of COVID spread with a a mask mandate because masks aren't perfect either. You know, everyone can just intuitively know that you cannot fully stop a viral spread that has this kind of infectiousness just from wearing a paper mask over your mouth. And so what it would do is break down confidence in the whole thing and you get less compliance, not more compliance. This is one of those areas where I'm really sorry that people don't like it, but it requires individual responsibility and a grown up understanding that sometimes things in life are not perfect. So you do your best, you wear the mask when you're around others, be safe, wash your hands a lot. But as far as the real low hanging fruit, to deal with the economic impact of COVID, it's reopening the economy. That's what policymakers should be focused on. I got less than a minute, but last week you were adamant about the energy industry thriving, not just surviving. They've been the biggest winner since the election. Uh, In less than a minute, your overall assessment of what the stock market is saying about the election outcome and maybe what we've got to look forward to. I think that the sort of rotation you've seen out of these so-called work from home stocks and into a lot of the things like uh, energy and financials that were beat up under the pretense that we were going to be locked down forever. I think common sense is coming back into valuations. And the reality is we were never going to be shut down forever. And the world will have a sense of normalcy. And that normalcy is going to involve things like oil and gas and banks. Therefore, the market is starting to reflect that better, Charles. David Bonson, always appreciate our conversations. Really do. Thank you, my man.